evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I am going to talk about Kepler's third law. Now you may be asked to derive this formula so please be aware of what I'm up to. The exam board may go can you derive Kepler's third law or prove Kepler's third law. Now Kepler was uh, an ast astronomer who had lots of laws about orbital motion and this one states that the time period squared is directly proportional to the radius of the orbit cubed. And I can get to this by basically equating the centripetal force and the gravitational force. Now this idea that gravitational force is thing pulling it towards the centre of the mass and it's orbiting around that is a mixture of circular motion and um, <coughs> Newton's law of gravitation. So if I take this idea that F equals M omega squared R and F equals G big M little m over R squared. So I'm going to make these two equal. I'm assuming that the centri centripetal force causing the rotation is also the Newton's law of gravitation. So M omega squared R equals G big M little m over R squared. As you can already see, the little m's are affected, so this is important. The mass of the actual... Um, thing that's orbiting doesn't actually matter. Um, and I end up with omega squared r cubed equals g m. So I'm actually quite close at the moment because I've got my r cubed but I haven't got my t squared. So I'm going to replace the idea that omega is 2 pi over t and I'm going to end up here with 4 pi squared over t squared r cubed equals g m. I can rearrange that. I end up with r cubed equals g m t squared over 4 pi squared. As you can see here, these things here are constant for that system. So gravitational field uh, constant there, g. Uh, so that's the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 that M here would be constant for that system. So in case of the Earth system, it would be at the, the 5.98 times 10 to the um, 24. If you were looking at the star, things orbiting the sun, it would be the mass of the sun. Random uh, star in the sky, we could work out its mass looking at its luminosity, etc. Four is constant, and so it's pi squared. So what I've ended up here is I've got R cubed equals a constant, I'm going to call that K, times by T squared which is exactly what Kepler said. Now this derivation is quite quick, but may be assessed in the um, exam itself. So you literally are just assuming that the centri centripetal force is caused by Newton's law of gravitation. And you're just making those two formula equal. And this is actually really important because this is how we can work out a lot of things in information about exoplanets. We can look at this um, we can look at a planet um, orbiting, we can look at its time period, okay, and if we can work out the mass of the system, the mass of the thing that's causing the field, so the star in the centre, and we can make assumptions about that looking at its, spect uh, looking at its spectra and see what, where it along in the star, um, it's the spectra and its luminosity and working how far away it, in its lifetime it is. We can then find the R cubed and see if it's in this thing called the Goldilocks zone, which you may have heard about. This idea that there is a point where if a planet is in a system where it's just right, so not too hot, not too cold, just right, it will be possible that it could harbour carbon light based life forms. And this is one of the big things at the moment in physics for looking at um, this Goldilocks zone and finding these exoplanets that we're able to find here. So this formula, Kepler's third law of motion, which is that the time period of an orbit is directly proportional to the radius cubed of the orbit. Okay, and I'm using the idea of circular motion and Newton's law of gravitation there, and I get this formula here, which is important. Okay, so you may be asked in an exam to derive this, or you may be asked to prove that this is true with sets of data. So you may be asked, you may be given loads of radius data, and time data and you'd be asked to say is this true and what you are doing you would have to find this constant for each value 
And if that constant was the same for all three, this holds. So that is Kepler's third law of motion.